So right now we're looking at part two of our focus on issues of water in the Santa Clarita Valley. I'm joined with Scott Hamilton, supervisor for the city's environmental services division. Uh, Scott, in part one, we looked at uh, urban runoff and people, you know, putting debris uh, into the storm drains. You're kind of the guy that has to deal with that. Yeah, my staff uh, cleans all the storm drains in the Santa Clarita Valley. Uh, basically, they, you know, as you saw in the video, there's going to be a lot of uh, trash, which what happens is that this season we didn't get a lot of rain, so there's a lot in the catch basin. Um, what will happen in the other seasons when there's a lot of rain, it actually gets washed to the river. So we got lucky this time. We got a lot of debris sucked up before we actually made it to the river. So um, what happens if we get too much debris in there, it'll clog, and then that'll cause flooding to the streets and sometimes private residents. And the purpose of a storm drain is not to collect trash and get it off the streets. The purpose of a storm drain is actually to make sure there's no flooding on the streets and get uh, clean water out to the river. Yes, that's true. Um, basically, this storm drain has been designed to take water that used to be in an area where there was not uh, streets or a storm drain system. It just naturally flowed. Um, and to move that from the street surface so there's, you know, we're able to drive our cars on there and there's not flooding to uh, private residents. Talk about... Uh, the efforts that it takes for to get all the debris out of the storm drains and also what happens um, when the garbage accumulates. Well in the past we used to do this by hand. Um, now that we've got the big vector truck it makes our job a lot easier. We do a lot more in a very short amount of time. What happens if you get too much in there, like I said before, it'll clog the uh, storm drain system and then it'll cause flooding to streets. Um, with other issues with the NPDES permit, um, th they require us to maintain these storm drains so we don't have all this trash and debris making it to the river and then all ultimately ending up in the uh, Pacific Ocean. How often do you visit the storm drains and clear them? Uh, we clean them four times a year, uh, usually right before the rainy season, usually after a storm event, and then uh, twice during the season. So four times a year, I mean, you definitely collect a lot of uh, garbage, but you, you just there's no way to get it all. Uh, no, we can't get it all, but we usually get around between four and 6,000 pounds uh, just out of the storm drain system. And talk about the uh, piece of equipment behind you. Uh, the vac truck is uh, it's a great it's a great tool that we got. It, it basically helps the uh, guys do their job more efficiently. Uh, we can do more catch basins in a, a shorter span of time, not having to dump as much, uh, go back and forth. We had some small trailers before where you get like five or six catch basins, then you have to go dump. Uh, this new one, we can actually uh, get 30, 40 drains at a time. So, S Scott, we, we saw you guys cleaning out the uh, storm drain, and it's obviously it was full of debris. Um, you know, looking around, it's full of cups and it's full of other things that people just toss out of their window. Yeah, basically, you know, you get the 1% of the population that, you know, thinks it's okay to throw it out their window and, you know, they figure it goes somewhere. They just don't have the uh, understanding that it actually goes down to the ocean. So when they're on the beach and they see all these things on the beach, you know, they're wondering where it comes from, where it's come from themselves. You know, they're the ones throwing it out the windows, throwing their cigarette butts and what have you, just because they're, you know, they just don't want to hold it in their car until the next time they stop. Um, so, yeah, it, it's, a, it's an issue. God, I want to thank you for joining us. Uh, stay tuned for part three of our look at water issues in the Santa Clarita Valley when we're actually going to go into the river.